I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost and I'm outside the Hamilton Native Outpost office here this morning. We have this small native planting and this morning I wanted to talk a little bit about the reputation that native plants have for being slow to develop. It takes them a while to get going and get started and before you see blooms on the native plants. And so I wanted to explore that this morning. So I wanna look at three things this morning. Is it true that native plantings are slow to develop? If so, why is that true? And third, what can I do to help my native planting to develop faster? So let's start with, is it true? Well, they say beauty's in the eye of the beholder. In other words, some things are subjective. And I would say that that's a little bit up to interpretation of what do you think is fast and what do you think is slow as far as a native planting developing. A lot of people think that a native planting will give them blooms during that first year. However, if that's your definition of a good timeline, they are slow to develop. A rule of thumb with the native perennial plants is that it takes three years to see blooms. Some things take more, some things take less, uh, but that's a general rule of thumb. So why is it that native plantings are slow to develop? Well, I would suggest to you it's because we're in a high rainfall zone. So high rainfall compared to say the desert. If the tall grass prairie plants, so let's say big blue stem, little blue stem, if the blue stems used to grow there historically, then we get a lot of rainfall as compared to the desert. And so in these ecosystems, the plants are slow to develop. And you say, that doesn't make sense. You get more rain, they should develop faster. They have more water to work with and grow with. But I would suggest to you that it's because we're in these high rainfall ecosystems that we have perennial plants. So perennial plants are those plants that come back from the root system year after year, and they don't come back from seed year after year. So the classic example would be a tree. A tree obviously comes back from the root system year after year after year. And in order to develop a tree, you have to have plenty of time for that tree to grow its root system so that it can come back from it year after year. Many trees, if the top of it gets removed, they will still come back from the root system that following year. And of course, the top part of the plant is shorter uh, that first year, but they have a root system that goes deep and can replenish the top of that plant. So basically, in these high rainfall ecosystems, we have perennial plants, and perennial plants have to develop a root system. And I talked about trees there, but it's the same with herbaceous plants. Herbaceous meaning something that's not woody, not a tree, not a shrub. And so our native perennial herbaceous plants are the same way. They develop a deep, deep root system. They come back from that root system potentially 100 years for all that same plant lives. And then when they have that deep root system, it allows them to come back but they're slow on the development. They need to develop that root system so that they can come back from it year after year. When I think about a native planting, I think of the first year you have the seedlings and they start out very small, uh, either a monocot or a dicot. So if we have a dicot, this would be a dicot, you have these two seed leaves. And so they start out really small and then maybe that year they get, you know, two, four, six, eight, 12 inches tall. It depends on a lot of things that first year as to how big they get. They can, if the weed pressure, the weather are all favorable, of course the plant gets taller. But it's really focusing in on developing that root system that first year. The second year, it continues to focus on developing a strong root system. And then by the third year, a lot of times you're starting to see the blooms of that plant. So what can be done about our native planting that's developing at a snail's pace? The first thing we can do is we can expect it and we can plan for it. A lot of our expectations determine how happy we are with something. And so if we know that it's going to be slow to develop and we know that we should not expect very many blooms that first year, now often there's some annual and biennial species that bloom that first or second year, but that just for a period of weeks maybe. And then there's no other blooms during that year and it looks kind of ragged. So if we set ourselves up for the expectation not to expect much those first couple years, we'll be a lot happier with the fact that there isn't much those first couple years. 
there's a joke that if you go ahead and do your native planting, go to Hawaii, take a three year vacation, and then three years later, come back and see if it's a success. There's a lot of truth to that. Don't expect a big showing of flowers or even the tall native grasses necessarily that first couple years. So the second thing we can do about it is to control the annual weed pressure. So annual weeds, uh, weeds are in the seed bank, they're in the soil, they're just a natural part of, of the soil and what's living in there is those weed seeds. And so if we can, when they germinate, and they will, when they germinate, if we can control that annual weed competition, and uh, there's a couple different ways we can do that, we can help our plants to get sunlight because the annual weeds get taller, they get bigger, and they provide a lot of competition. So they're taking away the sunlight, they're taking away the water in the soil, the rain, if it rains, those weeds take that moisture and use it for themselves. And then also they're taking away any nutrients that are available. So if we can kind of hurt or discourage that annual weed pressure, then we can do that to the benefit of our native plants. So there's a couple ways that we can do that. One is with a selective herbicide. So some herbicides will hurt some plants, but not others. So let's take panoramic or plateau, two different names for the same thing. This herbicide, uh, if you're planting a native warm season grass field, like big blue stem, Indian grass, little blue stem, it doesn't hurt those grasses, but it will cut down a lot of the annual weed competition. It will never germinate, never show up. And so that can really help get those grasses off to an excellent start. Depending on what you're planting, there may or may not be selective herbicide options to use. Another thing to do though, if that's not the case, if there are no selective herbicide options to use, or if you choose not to use those options, is to mow it. So when the annual weeds start getting tall and they start to canopy over, you can come in and give them a haircut, basically. And so then, the sunlight is all of a sudden getting back down to those small native seedlings that are so much shorter than the annual weeds and they're able to grow. Now, of course, there's some caveats. You don't want to do that in a drought. Uh, you want it to be nice growing conditions for your native seedlings when you do that. But when you get a lot of competition and I'm talking like you're walking out there and there's like, you know, you see very little of the soil out there because of all the annual weed competition, it can be a good time to do that. On our website, there are timelines for how to establish with some of these selective herbicides, if it fits the type of planting, you know, the goal of what you're wanting to plant. And there's also guides for mowing high to control that annual weed competition, both written guides and videos. So check out our website at hamiltonnativeoutpost.com.